The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Monday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN 906 AM Monday morning. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading and we got the S&P right now, folks, up 10 points, approaching 4,700. You're talking about right near record territory. You back it up to Friday's action. A little bit of a sell-off intraday on Friday, but s and is reaching 4,711 before you sold off to that low. We had about 130 on Friday afternoon, 4,674. You see the action Sunday night, higher prices in the S&P. Tech stocks flat right now. NASDAQ 100 flat at 16,351. Remarkable numbers. How about the Dow accelerating higher? We're within about 10 points of the intraday high we had on Friday in the Dow. 36,364 right now. You got the Dow up 152 points. The Russell up 7 tenths percent. You're talking about to the tick. We're talking high territory right now in the Russell up 7 tenths percent at 2451. How about cryptos, folks? To the moon we go. Bitcoin up 4,500 bucks. That's a 7.4% pop. No real action in terms of what's driving that action. You take a look at the daily. Within about a thousand to two of that all-time high we had just printed on October 20th, we're trading up quite a bar. You look where we are: 65,910 on Bitcoin. Now that's Bitcoin. You back it up to Ethereum. Ethereum pushing 4,800 this morning. You're up 5.3%. I believe that is an all-time high. There it is, all-time high for bit, uh, Ethereum. And look at the run this thing has had, let alone September 30th. Okay, you're at 2,800. But man, that pullback you had under 2,000, that was a buying opportunity in Ethereum. Not sure we'll see that one again. You're talking about all-time highs in Ethereum this morning, up 240 bucks. Gotta love the crypto sector uh, updates to kick off the program. Crude oil, up 41 cents this morning at 81.67. We got the gold contract up eight dollars at eighteen twenty-five this morning. We scroll down to notes and bonds right now. A little bit of lower price and higher yield. We're talking about a yield right now of one point four seven percent. You see the rise on a daily basis that we've had recently on that ten-year. You take a look at it on a fifteen-minute for the action we had, whether it was on. Wednesday, we had Fed Day. From there, we have higher price and lower yield. I mean, look where we were on Wednesday. We were at 130.16 at one point on that little bit of a sell-off right as the Fed came out with their announcement before Chairman Powell excuse me, started talking. And look at that action we had on Wednesday. Really low volatility. But, but man, the trend started on Thursday. It continued through to Friday. And you're talking about a full point and a half. A full point and a half movement in the tenure over that time, uh, leading to lower interest rates, lower yields, I should say, on the tenure, 1.47%. The 30-year is down 12 ticks. Look at that move. The 30-year from Wednesday was at 159.18. You're talking about three and a half points in the 30-year. 30-year really can move. This morning, negative by 12 ticks. And let's jump over to the volatility index this morning, the VIX. Friday sell-off. Putting a little bit of heat into the VIX up from 15 to 17 this morning. We're back to 16.55. A little bit of elevation, right? Check, check out the VIX compared to where the VIX was last week and then take a look at where the market is. Tuesday, we had a VIX at 16. We are above Tuesday's VIX. Keep that in mind because when you take a look at the S&P, you look at where we were on Tuesday. Tuesday, we were trading at 4,600. You have gained 100 points in the S&P since Tuesday. And meanwhile, the VIX has gone up. Keep your eye on that, folks. Sometimes that VIX can be a uh, leading indicator there as we have an elevated VIX really spiking on Friday's action and staying at that level right now as we come into Monday trading. Uh, November 8th, remarkable charging through November trading already. All right, where do we kick it off? Why not kick it off with Tesla himself? Elon Musk having quite a weekend on Twitter. Tesla shares down $62, all things considered. You're talking about barely a pullback, folks. You take a look at this chart, all right? Now, the, we don't have a daily print yet. 1160 on this chart, talking about right here, okay? All things considered, barely a pullback. But uh, Musk has a few, a few um, hot topics that he's been discussing over the weekend on Twitter. And man, we kick it off uh, proposing selling 10% of his stock in a Twitter poll. Twitter poll launched Saturday. I pulled it up here. 
Much is made lately of unrealized gains being a means of tax avoidance, so I propose selling 10% of my Tesla stock. Uh, he says here, I will abide by the results of the poll, whichever way it goes. Well, folks, the poll's got 3.5 million votes. Okay, this was put up there Saturday at 3.17 p.m. Eastern Time uh, by a margin of 58 to 42 by a 16 point gap. Twitter is proposing the richest man in the world sell 10 percent of his Tesla stock. There's a lot going on here in this tweet, folks, in a big way. Uh, you think about um, quite a way to dump a position in Tesla if the man himself thinks that 1200 might be a little bit of an elevated price uh, without claiming responsibility for selling the shares himself right talk about putting it on the tax conversation as opposed to the richest man in the world selling 10 percent of his position if that's what he does we'll see how this gets spun today tomorrow as we go forward um, but if you're going to try and sell a huge chunk of your position as the owner and the richest man in the world of your company what better way to do it than to say that i have no responsibility for that share um, sell that selling of the shares and I'm putting it all on Twitter because of tax proposals I don't buy that for one second but man you can't argue with the genius in terms of what mr. Musk is out there doing and uh, he had some some interesting provocative comments in that in that tweet as well uh, we'll leave it at that but uh, we're gonna see where this thing's opens man you're gonna see some volatility today if you're talking about Elon Musk potentially proposing a 10% sell-off Folks, no matter what you think about Elon Musk, okay, he would not be dumping 10% of his shares of Tesla if he thought it was undervalued. Would not be happening in one second, okay? Regardless of what's going on with taxes, he would not be dumping 10%, okay? Not even close. Uh, yeah, and they're talking about in the den, right? He owes $15 billion in taxes on an option grant, needed to sell to cover his tax burden. I appreciate it, Dan. It's like, you know, I almost don't even need that information because if you think that this isn't a self-serving interest from Mr. Elon Musk putting that out there, then I don't know what to tell you. It's quite a genius move because obviously he's going to dump those shares potentially and he's not going to claim any responsibility for why he sold them. He's actually going to use it as a way to argue against tax proposals that are in the interest of taxing the wealthiest, if not the wealthiest person in the entire world. Um, and as I said, man, it was just craziness in terms of some of the comments he had out there for politicians as well. Uh, pretty juvenile action out there. Mr. Musk, not one to care about uh, much out there in terms of those tweets. But man, it was quite a weekend in terms of what he's doing out there. Uh, note, I do not take a cash salary or bonus from anywhere. I only have stock. Thus, the only way for me to pay taxes personally is to sell stock. There it goes. Um, true. Except you can always take loans, folks. You can always take out a loan against your assets. Um, I'm not sure if the richest man in the world is aware of that from the tweet. Uh, it would sound like he's not. There's a lot going on in this tweet, folks. I wonder how that's going to play out. But pay attention because uh, Musk is not selling shares if he thinks it is undervalued. He is a brilliant man no matter what you think. Um, and, yeah, he's, he's potentially dumping it. I mean, this thing is up 50%, folks, in less than a month. 50, five zero percent. He's the richest man in the world because of that run. And guess what? He's not willing to give it back. He's going to dump some of that position. Uh, S&P's up by 11. NASDAQ now in the positive. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back in three minutes. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors.
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE and you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We got all the markets in the green to kick off trading right now. s and is up by 11, Dow up 148 right now, NASDAQ up a solid eight points. Uh, I say solid, back in the green. Checking out the cues. Talked about this before, checking out those cues. Keep your eye on this uh, channel line. For the first time, I've been bringing this up for the better part of your approaching 14 months or so. The NASDAQ 100 been accelerating higher within this trend line. We break above that trend line. That's a weekly. Last week, breaking above it, we're going to open even uh, at about 398. Is that today's bar? No, that's not. That's last week's bar. We do not have a bar printing yet, but we're going to open right at about 398.60, kind of where we were as the closeout yes, uh, last week on the NASDAQ 100. Now, jumping back to Tesla real quick, because this one's going to be a rocket ship on the open one way or the other, I imagine. Uh, Elon Musk, I believe he's got about 227 million shares this morning. They're talking about in the den. I appreciate it, Dan, talking about he's taking a loan already um, against many of those shares, potentially 90 million. Not sure of that information, but that's what they're talking about. He's got about 227 million shares of Tesla. Uh, you sell off 10% of that, folks, and you're talking about almost $30 billion um, a sale. Be wary when you have an owner of a company selling $30 billion worth of stock and he's going to try and blame it on Twitter. Only Elon Musk could get away with something so um, fantastic in terms of the way he is spinning this. Uh, $60 is nothing on this equity. Uh, what's, what's, what's to say he doesn't put out another tweet in another five days, right? We know how he rides this. And if he's selling $30 billion worth of shares, he might want to diversify. He might want to put it into his other ventures. You know, that's a fair assessment. But he's no fool. And this thing is up 50 bucks, 50% uh, in a month for that type of wealth appreciation. Uh, even Elon knows that you get pullbacks, folks. You definitely get them like this. Uh, you had that pullback in terms of when it got added to the S&P 500. You skyrocketed to about 900. And before you knew it, folks, this thing was trading at 540. OK, so Elon probably not willing to give that back, looking for some type of a pullback as you go from 800 to 1200 in the span of a month. Uh, just a remarkable case study of what's going on from the richest man in the world um, using Twitter to gain some cover in selling a $30 billion position almost as the richest man in the world in his largest ownership of uh, a company, Tesla. Remarkable. All right, jumping back to what else we got going on. Give me one second. 
Uh, what else we got? Let's jump around and we'll jump to Bitcoin a little bit. Crypto world hits three trillion market cap as Ether and Bitcoin gain. Bitcoin, um, Binance Coin, Solana also advanced more than 20 percent. This crypto run is on fire, folks. I, I kicked it off saying, you know, you got Bitcoin up about forty five hundred bucks right now, putting it back on a 15 minute basis. There's your pop Sunday night. Bitcoin, of course, trading all weekend long. And there's no real fundamental news driving this action, which is the most interesting thing. Maybe uh, everybody thinks that Elon's going to take his Tesla money and buy some Bitcoin. I kid. I kid. But nonetheless, you're up to about 67. You start talking about $3 trillion, folks. We get any type of a substantial pullback. The volatility tied to this type of a market cap is pretty substantial. When you think about the swings we have in that market, you think about the wealth created and destroyed as you have that type of volatility. Not sure there's been any other time in our lifetimes where you have an asset class that is so large yet so volatile. Um, as of this morning, overall market cap for crypto, $3.3 trillion. The third and fourth biggest tokens, Binance Coin and Solana, adding more than 20% over the last seven days. All of the seven biggest coins are up over the last week. Bitcoin's up, as we said, 5.5% at about 66,000. Ether's got a new all-time high. They got Bitcoin on the top in red. They got Ether on the bottom in blue. Bitcoin, just under the highs we made recently. Ether, taken off to the upside in a big way. We'll keep our eye on that market, uh, but it is a nonstop trip so far. All right, getting to oil. Uh, bunch of articles out here in oil out here. Uh, this one talking about where oil could be. Um, if you don't have OPEC plus, the United Arab Emirates said oil prices would be even higher today if it wasn't for OPEC plus, signaling the group will continue resisting U.S. pressure to pump faster. Fortunately, we have OPEC plus. Now talk about a bias for the UAE energy minister, energy minister talking up their own book, potentially. Basically, I should say, basically, the 23 nation alliance of major crude exporters has prevented quote unquote, us from having double or triple the prices. And that's something we need to appreciate. They want more love, folks. OPEC Plus wants more love for keeping prices so low. That's what they're talking about. Not sure that's the case. Uh, and before we jump to the chart, oil pairs gains as Saudi pricing is countered by U.S. comments. All across the board, we got oil with some um, volatility. Gave up some of its gains as sharp price hikes from Saudi Arabia were weighty, were weighed against the potential for the U.S. to release some of its strategic petroleum reserve. The strategic petroleum reserve, it can have an impact, folks, but with everything going on in the world right now, that is not a substantial impact. That's probably why the Biden administration is pausing and hasn't done anything yet. I mean, the last thing you want to do is, is push that oil out there at a time when it's so expensive and have very minimal impact on the market. With everything going on in the market right now in crude, I can't imagine that one surplus of supply, which is what would happen, would make a meaningful impact. Uh, Saudi Arabia made some of the biggest increases to its official selling prices in a decade at the end of last week, a move enabled by low global stockpiles and tight supplies. In a further sign of robust demand, Asian buyers will probably take their full contractual volumes of oil next month, despite the higher cost. Little sign of bullish sentiment wavering. It's just bullish across the board. We talk to Teddy Kegstad every Wednesday at 40 past the hour. He's been talking about $100 oil for months now. And uh, I can't imagine this thing turns around with everything going on in the economy, supply shortages, uh, oil, a one-way trip in a big way. Let's jump over to gold as we talk commodities right now. Gold. A little bit of a bid this morning, continuing that run. You're up about 10 bucks at 18.26. We take a look at gold on a daily. We back it up to even a weekly. Excuse me. You see the run we had. We'll call it the COVID lows of 14.49. You trade up to 2089. We did trade down to that 618 back in March. You touched that level back in August. Uh, just been a consolidation, really, for the better part of pushing five months now on gold. I mean, look where we are. Outside of that one tail back in August, you've been in a price range of gold of about $50 for five months, folks. We're pushing the upper boundary of that line. Whether you back it up to August, we had a high of 1836. You back things up to July, we had a high 1837. Early July, 1835. We're coming up to 1825 right now in the price of that gold contract.
excuse me, a little bit of a cough this morning getting over, but I'm going to get through it, folks. Uh, okay, and let's jump through some of the other stocks that we have that are making moves this morning. We got a bunch of action. Tesla kicks it off in a big way. Uh, Regeneron was higher after they have a single dose of its antibody cocktail that could provide long-term protection, protection against COVID-19. R-E-G-N is their symbol. Regeneron on a 15-minute basis. You're up about eight bucks, not them too substantial, giving back some of those gains this morning on that news. Now, Pfizer was really a runner on Friday. You had all the travel stocks up in a big way. This morning, Pfizer basically flat. You're up about 10 pennies for Pfizer this morning, checking out some of those travel stocks. Look at the run. We're going to open on American up another 40 cents or so after accelerating higher on Friday. Delta Airlines going to open up another 80 cents or so. We jump to United going to open up a solid dollar 30 this morning all the travel stocks let's see them domestically as we come into the break jet blue trading higher let's check out the cruise ships norwegian right now higher from 2892 to 2938 we do have norwegian in my newsletter folks rocket equities and options carnival up about 20 cents as well stay tuned folks we'll be right back for the open Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other tigers and tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational web webinars for all trading levels. And make sure you check out Tiger TV for free on TFNN.com or TFNN's YouTube channel for live financial content from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern on market days. Stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open and we got the S&P up about 13 points right now. NASDAQ 100 barely in the red by about 15. The Dow up 172. Look at that action in the Russell up 17. Got to check out Tesla to see how the open reacts. And as expected, lower prices down 7.1%, man. If I was holding Tesla, 
and I had Elon Musk out there polling Twitter to dump $30 billion worth of shares, I would not be buying at 1160 this morning when you were just trading at 800 less than a month ago. Tesla shares down 6.7% this morning. We'll see how that one reacts. It's going to be a wild ride for Tesla today, I imagine, folks, in a big way. All right, jumping around to what else we got going on. Uh, China. So China. G set to unveil new doctrine that could let him rule for life. I don't imagine he's going to face a lot of resistance over there, but you never really know quite what's going on. Communist Party's first official declaration on history in 40 years is expected to be its biggest event of this year. <coughs> Excuse me. Only two men in the Communist Party's history have ever written a so-called historical revolution. And uh, they're waiting to see whether Xi becomes the third. A first official declaration on Chinese history in 40 years is set to top the agenda when the ruling party huddles this week in the latest major meeting before a twice a decade Congress next year, where Xi is expected to break president and secure a third term to extend his indefinite rule. You got Mao Zedong, Zedong and uh, I'm not going to get that one, Deng Xi Jinping. Uh, their historical resolutions came at critical junctures in the nation's trajectory. I mean, He's, Xi is, you know, there's three of the biggest people in China historically since the People's Republic. Uh, you have Mao, Deng, Jinping, uh, and Xi is going to be the third over there in a big way in terms of transforming that. Issuing his own magnum opus would not only put Xi on par with those party titans, but could signal big changes afoot in the world's second largest economy. There's already big changes afoot in a big way. So keep your eye on that one. The other thing, back to domestically, we have Chairman Powell. I believe he's out there at 1030 a.m. this morning. He'll be making opening remarks at a diversity comments uh, conference with his comments likely to be watched for any reference to minority employment. You're at a diversity conference, so obviously diversity, minority employment going to be in focus. I imagine he may get some questions about the jobs number that we had on Friday. Not sure if he takes questions at that, but nonetheless, you'll be watching his remarks. We got six Fed chairs talking today. Quiet period's over. Fed was last week. They're back at it. You have Clarida. You have Harker, Bowman, Evans also speaking today at various events. And you also got $56 billion worth of three-year notes going off at 1 p.m. today. A uh, lot of action in terms of Fed speak. Um, $56 billion of three-year notes. We'll see how that market reacts. Uh, market taking things in stride. Dow continuing to catch a bid. And look at that. Tesla catching a bid, too. Somebody's buying it at 1140 uh, this morning. Remarkable action. Let's check out notes and bonds so far. Staying pretty much where we're at right now on that note in bond. All right. Let's jump down the equity list in terms of what's moving today. We started with Tesla. Regeneron. Uh, Caterpillar. So they're a fresh pick at Baird. Uh, Caterpillar could see strong earnings in the next few years as newly passed infrastructure bill adds to a strong demand environment, Baird said in a note on clients. Uh, Caterpillar, C-A-T is their symbol, giving back some of those gains, but still up about 4% on the open this morning. Uh, Cody, the makeup and beauty stock. They were higher pre-market, better than expected results of the first quarter, according to estimates, selling more than its stake in Wella. More of its stake, excuse me, to K-K-R-C-O-T-Y, that makeup industry. There you go, up 11.6% for Cody. Yeah, I want to get down to Canopy, man. Watch out for these cannabis stocks. It just does not stop. Canopy, uh, can, uh, canopy uh, with their earnings on Friday, you make a low of 11.31. Today, you're down another 1%. It's only 12 cents, but you're only an $11 stock. That's a 1% hit on the open after the slide you had on friday you take a look at this thing on a daily folks can you find a bid in this thing since february because i can't you cannot find a bid and as much as i believe that in the future uh there are going to be some winners and looters losers in canopy in a big way uh i wouldn't be touching this thing right now and i wouldn't because there is a very real chance that you're at nine bucks or even below uh you got to see some strength in that you know you look at the volume we had last week that's some volume, folks. Look at that volume bar, right? We got volume. You're talking about volume of 43 million on a weekly in Canopy. You back things up. We had 36 million back in May. That was the last sign of strength almost, right? So you have more volume than we had in May. And that's the highest volume bar we had since the week of February 8th, when I think you had a little bit of Reddit-fueled mania pushing it to 101 million when this thing went from 40 bucks to 56 and closed out that week at 40 bucks yet again. So you take out that week. Right. And you just put up, I believe, the biggest week of the year outside of January 1st. 
pay attention to that one. Looks like we're on our way to nine bucks for Canopy shares. Uh, would not have imagined that, folks, that you come into 2021 and you're going to see Canopy trade back to nine dollars. But nonetheless, that's the truth. Uh, now, Constellation, they are a strong company in a big way. They have what can turn into a majority ownership of Canopy. I think they got like 40 percent of it right now. That's one way that you could gain exposure to Canopy without throwing all your eggs in one basket of a stock that looks like it's just on its way to zero dollars. Uh, Constellation, strong alcohol company. They got, and I do have some Constellation in my retirement account, uh, but they have, whether it's Corona beer that, that, that really caught some acceleration just because of the name early last year, but they got, I think, Modella, they got Kim Crawford Wines. They have a lot of strong alcohol brands. Constellation up to 244 back in May. You look where they were back in October. That 382, I love the 382, I love the 618, folks. Uh, if you're looking to get into Constellation, maybe 212 is that point. You could get in it. You could always start a partial, partial position in Constellation, uh, gaining a little bit of exposure with a little bit less volatility to that cannabis sector. One way to do it uh, as you look at that chart, because, man, those cannabis stocks, I would not be paying attention. And just like that, we got the NASDAQ up 40 points like that. Can't help but want to take a peek back at Tesla. Just like that, you got Tesla up to 11 70. Remarkable. We'll see how the day proceeds and if Twitter uh, has any more of Mr. Elon Musk's antics out there, to say the least. All right, going down the line as well, Live Nation. This is a sad story, man. Um, out in Houston, Travis Scott concert, eight people dead. Um, very, very sad deal. And looks like complete mismanagement at first glance. Um, there were videos out there that were just almost tough to watch, even with Travis Scott still singing as this thing was going on in almost lifeless bodies getting carried out uh live nation they're they they're gonna have some answering to do in a big way to say the least yeah and dropping out of the gate i would imagine so 7.4 percent in the in the court of public perception they are gonna lose in a big way folks you watch that video of travis scott singing over the crowd as they're carrying out lifeless bodies and you say to yourself how does this happen man um just just Unfortunate doesn't even sum it up with a loss of life out there. And all the reports seem to say that uh, the people managing that arena, to say the least, were not doing their job. And that's just the beginning of things. They had strong, strong earnings on Thursday, traded to a high of 127.75. Now, look at this chart. Right? It has been a one-way trip from the COVID lows of $21, barely a pullback to 115 You know, concerts are here. I remember I was talking about them last week, saying, man, I think uh, the world has changed in terms of how active everybody's going to want to be, whether it's sporting events, concerts, live music. Live music is one of my favorite things to do in the world, folks. But man, that's just a sad deal when you got to worry about dying, going to a concert because nobody's doing their job out there. And they're going to face some lawsuits and probably rightfully so, down 7% for Live Nation out there. Stay tuned, folks. We got the S&Ps up by 14. All the markets in the green. We'll be right back in three minutes. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. Uh, all the markets in the green. I got a chart of Microsoft up here on a three-year weekly. These tech stocks, it just does not stop. Microsoft flat this morning. Man, look at the run this thing has had about in the last month, folks. You go from 280 to 335. We'll take a look on a 15-minute basis. A little bit of a give back yet. Amazon shares, talk about a run. Up another 1% right now. You were up to 35.79. You're talking about adding $300 from last Tuesday in less than a week. That's a 9% acceleration, potentially. $328 would be 10% on the dot, folks, and you just traded up $4 shy of a $300 move in four trading days on Amazon. Can't overstate the move that's going on in Amazon shares. Uh, checking out Google. Google shares up 6 tenths percent right now. Facebook, a little social media, up about 2 tenths right now. Twitter shares up half a percent right now. We'll jump over to Snap real quick. Snap trading up about three quarters of a percent right now. Got to check on Tesla again as this thing's going to be volatile. They're talking about potentially a buying opportunity over in the YouTube Tiger's Den. You could say that about any pullback, folks. I would be very careful when you got Tesla shares being up 50% in a month. 50% in a month. Uh, and you have people buying Tesla this morning on the news that he's going to sell a $30 billion position because Twitter says so. Be careful out there, folks. Uh, Elon Musk, he's the richest man in the world. And I mean, to, to bring it to full fruition in terms of um, where his head may be at, I mean, if you if you want to go down the rabbit hole of Elon Musk, right, Google or go over to YouTube and, and try and find the video of him talking about whether the, the entire planet and our entire existence might just be a sim, a simulation, right? Because he talks about that if you get further enough into the future, eventually, Assuming planet Earth is around, we'll have enough technology to run simulations that are pretty much akin to human life. That means that there will be simulations within simulations. Uh, that means there's only going to be one reality, and there's going to be simulations within simulations within simulations, and the odds that you are living in the one reality among the many simulations is is not likely, to put it bluntly. Basically saying that Musk says that we could be just basically in a computer simulation not realizing it far into the future tying that further uh it's all somewhat of a game and that doesn't mean it's a bad game okay but he approaches things from that mentality and if you take that mentality and run with it anything is game folks and when anything is game and you're up 50 percent you're talking about the richest man in the world approaching what 200 300 billion dollars i think he's pushing 300 billion dollars now um the wealth it's unimaginable the wealth he has and he's got no problem polling Twitter to dump 10% of his shares over the weekend and uh, some choice comments for some senators out there as well that I uh, that's I'm just not even going to go over them I uh, have to chuckle with what's going on out there go find them yourself uh, but be careful out there folks doesn't mean it can't go higher right doesn't mean it at all it is an outstanding company with one of the brightest people in the world running it 
but you're putting yourself in the crosshairs right there in a little bit if you step into this thing at 1200 bucks when you were just 800 bucks and you have the owner of the company dumping 10 percent where is the next tweet going to come from um from mr elon musk we will see all right let's jump over to zillow and see how they are reacting after a tough week last week zillow shares just kind of hanging out up a percent right now to 6681 this thing really fell out of bed from 104 to 63. want to talk about this a little bit because kathy wood uh, notably catching a lot of publicity for her accurate calls uh, she had been a big owner of zillow the interesting there right is that many articles i talked about this before were written early on about how difficult it was going to be for her to manage tens of billions of dollars when she needs to update her positions on a daily basis trying to trade against other wall street hedge funds veterans money managers when you have to update your positions on a daily basis and you're managing tens of billions of dollars is very difficult because many times you need to take multiple days to build a position, multiple days to exit a position. The market can figure out what you're doing potentially, front lead you in that position, causing you greater losses, causing you greater gains. The one thing that was interesting here is that on Tuesday, she added a marginal position of, I think, 288,000 shares. <coughs> Excuse me. And that was when the first report started coming out that Zillow was going to pause their home buying process, right, to, to, to get through the supply they had. Well, they come out with their earnings on Tuesday. Things are much worse than, the, than we thought. Uh, they're stopping the whole program entirely. They're dumping 25 percent of their workforce. And she decides to dump, I think, like 3.9 million shares on Wednesday. Now, things could have changed the mentality definitely could have changed from tuesday night because things were drastically different right cutting 25 percent of their workforce was a big difference i bring it up because there's a new level of trading in game theory that's going on because it's kind of like a pump fake that may have happened here right imagine you're a money manager and imagine you got to tell everybody what you're trading every single day the stock pulls back from 95 to 85. She adds to that position. What if she had already figured out that she was going to wait for earnings and maybe she was going to dump the shares if things weren't what she liked? What better way to maybe give some pause to the market and give them a head fake than saying, I'm, I'm adding marginally to my position on this pullback because I like Zillow so much that it just pulled back 12 percent and I'm adding shares. Meanwhile, what was she doing? She was head faking the market potentially. All right. Now, things could have changed because, boy, things did change Tuesday night. But keep your eye on this because so often CNBC, even Bloomberg, they love to talk about the updates of who Kathy Woods added. Right. What she added, what she dumped. Be careful, folks. There's a lot of game theory going on that maybe she's bearish a stock. And what would she do? She'd add a small position. And before the market figures it out, she dumps 3.9 million shares the next day. Now, as I said, things might have changed, but keep your eye on that. Because it's almost become a bit of a religion with the way that her uh, forecasts um, and position changes are updated and people kind of take that as face value but there's a lot more going on when you got to manage that type of a position and trying to get out of it without the market figuring out what you're doing and I think you're gonna see some of that happening more often as these things go forward all right jumping around to what else I have up here um, yeah, some soft bank. Jumping around to what else? How about NVIDIA? Let's jump to some NVIDIA shares. Blow past targets in Tesla-like move. Let's pull up the chart first because this thing has been quite a run in a big way. NVIDIA shares last week up to 310. This morning, we're up another 2.4% today. Check out this thing on a weekly, folks. From 50 bucks to kick off 2020 to 305, let alone kicking off this year alone, you were at 135. NVIDIA shares just not stopping on a weekly basis in a month. We're up 50% on NVIDIA shares. Remarkable. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm battling a little bit of that cough this morning. Crude oil holding steady up about 45 cents at 81.72. We got gold holding pretty well at 18.23 right now. We got to check in on Bitcoin. Bitcoin up about 4300 bucks up seven percent this morning uh checking back to tesla shares up four excuse me down 4.5 percent today but man can you imagine folks if on friday somebody told you what elon was going to do over the weekend would you think that this is what the chart would look like on a weekly basis in terms of the open monday no i would have thought this thing would have been far substantially lower even putting it on a daily okay that's barely a pullback folks you're back to wednesday prices in tesla of set of 11 
72. Again, we're trading at 800 bucks, folks, under 800 bucks on October 11th. It's only November 8th. Be careful on Tesla, folks. Uh, not sure I'd be initiating, adding, doing anything at this position right now. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back in three minutes. Finish up the show. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year, or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested, or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. I got a chart of PayPal up here. PayPal up 1.5% right now. PayPal has their numbers out after the bell. Uh, today, jumping over to the Analyze tab, you're talking about a $15 move basically priced into the event tonight. Well, we always talk about this one day market maker expected move about $15. Now, what's cool is for the week, you're talking about $17.50. So the way to look at that is you have a $17.50 move for implied volatility through Friday. $15 of that move is for today's action with the earnings tonight on PayPal. Uh, PayPal, checking out the chart on a weekly even, a little bit of a pullback from that 310 area. You're down to an area that we found support, whether it's back in the early part of the year, PayPal at about 229 right now. Now, going over the other companies we got, we got AMC out with their numbers tonight as well. Analyze tab, you're talking about about a $5 move price for their earnings tonight after the bell. Let me make sure. Yes, November 8th, uh, $5 move. And then for the week, you're about talking about a $7 move potentially. Tomorrow, uh, we get win. 
out with their numbers, I believe. Checking all of these. Win, the fundamentals, uh, earnings. There we go. November 9th, Win will be out with their numbers. We also get DoorDash and Coinbase tomorrow. DoorDash, almost a $16 move. Price from them. DoorDash, that'll hit Uber as well, because Uber, of course, in the food delivery business. And we get Coinbase. Talk about uh, some expectations. A $30 move for Coinbase, potentially, on their earnings. After the bell tomorrow, we get Disney, one of my favorite stocks for a while. Disney, talking about a $7.50 move. Disney really skyrocketed on Friday. That 382 area of $170 bucks been support for Disney. We accelerate Friday on the news of the Pfizer pill. Uh, and they'll be out with their numbers on Wednesday. Disney, like I said, $7.50 move price for their numbers on Wednesday. You take a look at the week and you're talking about $9.39 move for Disney shares. All right, folks, thanks so much for tuning in. We got to check out Tesla one more time before we wrap up the show. Tesla shares down 4.6%. Not bad, folks. You're talking about just back to Wednesday prices. The world has changed a lot in Tesla shares since Wednesday, I would say. The market... No one's selling right now. Down 4.5 percent, 1166. Stay tuned, folks. Basil's up next. Fast market. Uh, Larry Pesamento at 11. Fast market. Steve Rose, Dave White, Tom O'Brien. Have a great Monday, everybody.